Yeah. Good day to you. I talked to Ginger and found out what happened. Out with it, then. Ginger fled because he recognised one of the raiders. He was afraid they'd come back to silence him. Well, he was right. They were asking about him. So who did he recognise? He didn't know his name. Some fellow with a limp from Ujits. <sighs> All right. Since you've gone this far, you may as well ask around in Ujits. We have enough to do here in these parts anyway. Sir Radzik will tell you about it. He said to send you to him if you haven't already been. Any chance of some work here, Captain? It all depends on what you're ready to do, my lad. As I'm sure you've noticed, the roads around here are swarming with brigands. Sir Hanush has declared quite a reward for dealing with them. So what do you think I should do about them? We know about one of their encampments. It's to the east of Ratai in an abandoned mine. I don't really mind how you deal with them. Anyway, the leaders generally wear spurs, maybe like they're pretending they're nobility. Who cares? In any case, bring me the spurs, and I'll take it as proof that the deed's done. Very well. I'll see to it. Wait. In addition, Sir Hanush has offered a reward for every bandit who's killed. So take a good sharp dagger. You'll get a bit extra for each ear you bring. Very well. That sounds amusing. Well, as for amusement, I'd entertain myself by being very careful, lad. Take care now. God be with you, lad. What can I do for you? My lord, I managed to find a clue to the whereabouts of the bandits. Excellent. Bernard already told me what's been happening, but I'd like to hear it straight from the horse's mouth. The whole story, or just the gist of it, sir? It's up to you what you consider important. One of the Neuhof stable boys, a, a lad they called Ginger, fled from there and hid out with some charcoal burners. I have to say, there's a lot of them around. I never thought how many forges and ironworks they have to supply. That's true, but keep to the point. Oh, yes, sir. I had quite a job finding him. He was well hidden and with good reason. The bandits wanted to kill him because he recognised one of them. Did he tell you what happened? He said it wasn't one gang, but two. And one of them took fright when the slaughter started. Seems they were only interested in loot, so they quarrelled with the other lot. Then it came to a skirmish in the woods and one of them was killed. And the rest of them scattered. And did you find out where they went? All I know is one of them is from Ujits. I know enough about him to be able to track him down. All right, but those cutthroats must know who he is too, right? And if they want to get revenge on him or silence him, you'd better hope they don't get to him before you. So drop everything and get on his trail. Find out what he knows and then report back to me. I'm going to our encampment at Mahaya to oversee the security of the region. Yes, sir. Why choose Mehoyed? It's somewhat at the centre of events, isn't it? And what's more, there's another stud farm there. Sir, do you think they're going to try the same thing again? I shouldn't think so. Everyone will be on the alert now, but the secluded dwellings are more vulnerable. There are few people in them. They're scattered everywhere and we can't guard them all. But the bandits won't find much silver in places like that. There's always a groschen or two, some food and so on. Anyway, how much silver did they get from slaughtering those horses? True. If they'd stolen them, they could have sold them. 
Those were fine animals. Exactly. It's not about the silver. It's about something else. But what? Creating fear. Such great terror that you won't even squeak when they come to cut your throat. Never mind raise your hand against them. Fear that will root you to the spot. Staring like a rabbit entranced by a stoat, waiting for the death blow to fall. Helpless to do anything about it. God be with you. Mushrooms, apples, carrots, cabbage. God be with you. I'm looking for a fellow who lives here, but I don't know his name. Do you know anyone with a limp? What would you want with him? Well, it's no skin off my nose. The bastard has a cottage on the edge of the village by the road to Ratai. May the Lord watch over you.
along, citizens. Move along. There's nothing to see here. If that's what you call nothing to see, I'd like to know what something to see looks like. By the keys of St. Peter, this is all I need. We'll have to send word to Sir Hanosh. That might not be necessary. Who are you? I'm Henry of Scalitz, in the service of Hanish's Captain Bernard. I'm investigating the attack at Neuhof, and I think this could be related. Well, I'm the bailiff of Auschwitz. And I say we don't want any of that kind of trouble around here. What makes you think this has anything to do with Neuhof? One of the folk at the stud farm recognized someone from Auschwitz among the bandits. We have no bandits or murderers around here. Really? They say he had a limp? Shit. Well, allow me to introduce you to Limpy Lubosch. Or all that's left of him. Take a look around and ask a few more questions, if that's all right with you. You can take this mess off my hands and welcome to it. As for what else there is to find out, I don't know. But look and ask all you like. Who was Limpy Lubosch? A poor crofter and a scoundrel. Can't say I'm too surprised what happened to him. He kept company with all sorts of vermin. He was always getting into some kind of trouble. Punch-ups in the tavern and what have you. Has he been up to anything suspicious lately? Hmm. I don't know. The last few days he didn't go anywhere. He was home the whole time, but he always kept everyone in the village at arm's length. Did he have any kith or kin in the village? None. A loner he was. I don't know the last time I saw him with anyone. How come he limped? He got that from some villainy or brawl a long time ago. Do you happen to know where he was on the night of the Neuhof raid? I've no idea. He kept his distance from other folk, so you never knew if he was away or holed up at home. When did you find the body? And did anyone see anything? Just now. And nobody saw or heard anything. I don't know how they could gut him like that without someone hearing him scream. Another thing about Lubosch. Jesus Christ be praised. I've come in the name of Sir Hanush of Leiper. I'm investigating the massacre in Neuhof, and now a murder here as well. Can I ask you a few questions? Of course. Ask away. Have you noticed anything suspicious recently? Well, now I think of it, I hadn't seen him around for a while. No idea where he was skulking. That man Lubosch who was murdered, what was he like? He was a drunk who was always looking for a fight. Nobody liked him much, but I wouldn't wish an end like that on any man. Do you know what Lubosch was doing the day Neuhof was raided? Not a clue. Do you know anyone Lubosch used to spend time with, relatives or friends? He was a loner. He didn't even have any mates in the tavern. That's all. Thank you.
Good luck to you. My respects to you. I've come in the name of Sir Hanush of Leiper. I'm investigating the massacre in Neuhof, and now a murder here as well. Can I ask you a few questions? Sir Hanush gives a job like that to a young fellow like you? Well, what do I care? Ask. Do you know anyone Lubos used to spend time with? Relatives or friends? I really don't know. As far as I know, he had no kin. I never saw him with anyone. Do you know what Lubosch was doing the day Neuhoff was raided? I don't think he was home at all. Wait, are you saying he... Oh, Jesus! Have you noticed anything suspicious recently? I didn't see much of him lately. Not even in the tavern. Not till yesterday in church, as it happens. That's all. Thank you. God be with you. My respects to you. I've come in the name of Sir Hanush of Light. I don't know anything about it, but ask all you want. Do you know anyone Lubos used to spend time with? Relatives or friends? Not with anyone from the village. He used to sit in the tavern next to us sometimes. But he never said much. Do you know what Lubos was doing the day Neuhoff was raided? I was coming from the tavern very late that night, and I caught a glimpse of someone entering the village. He looked like he was in a hurry. It was only a shadow against the sky, but after what happened, I wouldn't wonder. That man Lubos who was murdered, what was he like? I didn't really know him. He kept to himself, even in the tavern. That's all. Thank you. God be with you. Huh. My respects to you. I've come in the name of Sir Hanush of Leiper. I'm investigating the massacre in Neuhof, and now a murder here as well. Can I ask you a few questions? Of course. Ask away. Do you know anyone Lubos used to spend time with? Relatives or friends? He was a loner. He didn't even have any mates in the tavern. That man Lubos who was murdered, what was he like? He was a drunk who was always looking for a fight. Nobody liked him much. But I wouldn't wish an end like that on any man. That's all. Thank you. May the Lord watch over you. Good health to you, sir. I've come in the name of Sir Hanush of Leiper. I'm investigating the massacre in Neuhof, and now a murder here as well. Can I ask you a few questions? Of course. Ask away. Do you know anyone Lubos used to spend time with? Relatives or friends? He was a loner. He didn't even have any mates in the tavern. That's all. Thank you. May the Lord watch over you.
Jesus Christ. Your clothes. Were you assaulted? Damn bandits, may they burn in hell. I've come in the name of Sahanish of Lipo. I'm investigating the massacre in Neuhof, and now a murder here as well. Can I ask you a few questions? I don't know how I can help you, but ask if you must. Do you know who Lubos used to spend time with? Kin or friends? As far as I know, he had nobody at all in this world. Do you know what Lubos was doing the day Neuhof was raided? I don't think he was home. I didn't see him all day. Have you noticed anything suspicious recently? There wasn't sight or sound of him for a long time. And then yesterday, he turned up at the church and even talked to the parish priest. I never saw him do that before. Probably had a bad conscience. That's all. Thank you. Goodbye. Blessings of our good Lord be with you, Father. I'm here in the name of Sahanish of Lipa, investigating the massacre at Neuhof, which seems to be connected to a murder here. Can I ask you a few questions? It seems Sir Hanush is employing children as investigators. But ask as you wish, boy. I hope this nasty business will be cleared up quickly. Did you know Lubosh? What was he like? A bit of a lost soul. Simple, rough fellow, but at heart I don't think he was such a bad person. Did you notice anything suspicious recently? My child, all sorts of suspicious things have been going on recently. People like Lubos don't know what to do about it, and sometimes they do stupid things. That's really not a lot of help to me, Father. I'm sorry to hear that. Do you know what Lubos was doing on the day Neuhof was raided? Unfortunately, I do know. And I'd like to help you with your investigation, but I can't. What? I'm bound by certain vows that forbid me to tell you. Vows more important than catching dangerous murderers? There are laws of God above the laws of man, son. And one of those is the sanctity of the confessional. Father, surely you can't be serious. There must be situations in which you can make an exception. There are things that apply always, no matter what the circumstances. And this is one of them. But Lubosh is dead. You can't hurt him. But if you don't tell me, more innocent people may die. If I told you, I would be betraying a vow that's a cornerstone of the Holy Church. If people believed the sanctity of the confessional couldn't be trusted, the consequences would be even worse than that. Worse than the death of innocent Christians? Worse than the murderer escaping punishment? No one escapes punishment. Father, Lubosch was my only lead to the Neuhof Raiders. Only he could tell me who was responsible for that massacre. If I don't find out who it was, it will probably happen again. Surely you wouldn't want that. I wouldn't. But I can't betray the sanctity of the confessional. I'll tell you what. Give me some time and I'll try to think up some way of helping you. Suppose we talk it over in the evening. In the tavern. Over a cup of good wine. Maybe we'll come up with something. All right. Thank you, Father. The Lord watch over you.
Good health to you. I've come in the name of Sir Hanush of Lipa. I'm investigating the massacre in Neuhof, and now a murder here as well. Can I ask you a few questions? I don't know nothing about it, but to ask all you want. Have you noticed anything suspicious recently? Come to think of it, he was in church yesterday. He was even talking to the priest and went to confession. I was wondering what he was up to. To take to the faith all of a sudden. But I suppose no sins too dark for God's mercy. Have you noticed anything suspicious recently? Come to think of it, he was in church yesterday. He was even talking to the... I was wondering. Do you know what Lubosch was doing the day Neuhoff was raided? I was coming from the tavern very late that night, and I caught a glimpse of someone entering the village. He looked like he was in a hurry. It was only a shadow against the sky, but after what happened, I wouldn't wonder. Do you know anyone Lubos used to spend time with? Relatives or friends? Not with anyone from the village. He used to sit in the tavern next to us sometimes, but he never said much. That's all. Thank you. Is there somewhere I could sleep here? Aye, there's room here. For how long? How about if I pay you for several nights? Sure, but let's see your coin first. These are harsh times. That's too much. Suit yourself. Take care now. Got it for you right here. Here, a beer.
I'm sorry I can't tell you everything. But maybe we can work something out. But first, I'd like to hear something about you, my son. With whom do I have the honor? Where are you from? I'm from Scalitz. Yeah, give me oh. all the best. I'm sorry. What about your kin? They're dead. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Here, we'll drink to them. It must have been terrible. It was terrible. It seemed so pointless. We had no warning. They just appeared and began the slaughter. God knows why. They killed anyone who didn't make it to the shelter of the castle. My parents, my girl, even the Deutsch who was on Sigismund's side. I didn't make it to the castle. I wanted to try and help my parents, but there was nothing I could do. Then I fled to Taunberg with the Cumans on my heels. They almost killed me. They slaughtered people in the surrounding villages. There was a pile of bodies in front of the church in Rovna. Folk who tried to take refuge there, but they... There. They... Satisfied? My poor child. May God grant them eternal rest. And how did you come to get this assignment? I'd have expected Sir Hanish to send that old grouch, Bernard. He did, but I found a witness and the trail led here to Ujits, so he sent me here to follow it up. Ah, well, congratulations. It's nice to see someone using their head to find things out instead of torture. We'll have to drink to that. Now the most important thing. What actually happened at Noyo? The good folks here about are saying all kinds of terrible things, but I take most of it with a pinch of salt. The rumors aren't exaggerated this time, unfortunately. The Neuhof stud farm was raided by bandits, but they didn't come to pillage or even take the horses. They only wanted to kill. They maimed the horses and slaughtered some people. I'm sure they would have killed more, but the bandits quarreled among themselves and broke off the attack. And judging by what's left of our Lubosch, they're still settling accounts. I see it's every bit as bad as people claimed. Dreadful. Well then, here's to those poor souls who had to die so pointlessly and so terribly. I've told you all about me. Now it's your turn, Father. You don't look much like our parish priest at home. I noticed you're pretty handy with a sword. I wouldn't expect that of a man of the cloth. You know what they say, the Lord moves in mysterious ways. But this is a bit more mysterious than others. Let's just say I haven't always been a priest. Fate led me to places where affairs were settled by force. These days, of course, it's just a bit of exercise to keep me in shape. Well, we've had an agreeable chat, but now let's get down to business. So, about this confessional seal. Do you really want more innocent people to die? Henry... That's not how it works. There are matters in which you can't make exceptions because if you do it once, you'll forever be tempted to do it again. If people stop believing in the church because their confessional secrets are betrayed, they won't trust anyone, and that's worse than even the most hideous crime. Cheers. Oh, you're just making excuses. The people who say the church is corrupt are right. You don't care about anyone, only your own comfort. I'm sorry you see it that way. Really sorry. You've no idea how wrong you are. I always wondered about the things a priest tells his congregation. Where is do you get the ideas for your sermons? Well, Ujits isn't prog. It's not enough to instruct people. They have to be entertained, too. If I only read from the Bible, I'd soon be preaching to an empty church. <laughs> Our priest wasn't exactly a bard. So what do you preach to your flock about? It has to be something topical. Condemning vices. And of course, describing them in detail. The tongue lashing about the two popes goes down well these days. And stories from real life, with a nice moral to them, are popular as well. Especially if they're about fornication and similar scandalous vices. Can you give me an example? Well, recently a priest by the name of Jan Hus started preaching in Prague in the Czech language, and the people liked it. I hear he always has a full house. A journeyman who heard him told me what Hoos is preaching, and I like the sound of it. 
I'm thinking about putting it in my own repertoire. What's so amazing about it? The preaching of Master Jan Hus about Mother Church, the lamentable wealth in which the church is drowning has turned to poison, and nearly the whole of Christendom is contaminated. Just like a flock of hungry ravens, they settled on this land to devour every grain of gold and silver. They know no mercy. Their hearts are corrupted by longing for wealth, and they shamelessly profit from everything. You want to baptize a child? Pay. You want to steal and murder? Pay and you will have absolution. What if the devil himself were to pay? Would he ascend to heaven too? With such money gained from the poor, they buy beautiful horses to ride and needless servants to pamper them. They gamble at dice and dress their whores in expensive furs. While Jesus Christ walked barefoot and had no place to lay his head. Look to your consciences, you robbers of the poor, for you are seen by God and his people too. Amen. Well, this Jan Hu's character is quite a rebel. Oh, the congregation will love it. I don't doubt it. Let's drink to that. Funny. That last bit reminds me of someone. What do you mean? My situation is completely different. Huth preaches against the prelates and the clerics who are robbing the poor. Look at me. I don't have a pot to piss in. I'm no better off than the folk I preach to. I'm one with them in poverty and suffering and everything that troubles them. I drink with them and curse those stuffed habits in Sassau Monastery. Thanks for the sermon, but I think I've been morally uplifted enough. Oh, it's getting quite late. What are your plans, Father? What do you suppose? We have a drink, of course. <laughs> ah, that sounds like a good plan. I knew you wouldn't let me down. Enough of this! Bailiff! Come on over here, sit down and have a drink with us. Don't vex me again, Father. It's three hours past dusk, and curfew is long gone. So what? So, I'll have you all whipped, and put in the stocks, and I'll write a letter to the bishop about you, priest. Well, nothing to worry about then. Everyone knows the only one around here who can write is me. <laughs> Enough! Men! Throw them out. You looking for a fight? Henry, back me up.
My dear, wouldn't you like to have a little ring on the bell? No sooner said than done. Uh. I'd love to. And Henry, too, I'm sure. Right, Henry? Stop that nonsense, Godwin. Are you out of your mind? What will uh. people say? They can say what they like. What do I care? What do they do to me? Watch the step, my dear. Careful, you don't hurt yourself. Here we are. Look at this beauty. Oh. Oh. <laughs> we can't do this, can we? Who says? Get ringing, wench. <laughs> 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 And now, my dears, comes the climax of the evening. <laughs> God, my you old goat. Come here. Mounted up. Say, Henry, shall we take a little ride of our own? <laughs> well, I have to say that was a fine evening. Godwin, you beast! Get up! Do you hear me? Wake up, you drunkards! Oh, fucking hell! Oh, oh, where the? Oh, what the? Oh, who the hell are you? Oh, Henry, my great friend, Henry. Didn't we have a wonderful time? Well, you oh. certainly did, you old lecher. Now you better pull yourself together, quick. You haven't much time. There's some water and something to eat on the table there, but if I were you, I would move my hairy arse before my flock eats me alive. 
Oh, stay pounding my head. Oh, my guts. Oh, my poor suffering stomach. Oh, what was that woman on about? Wait, before my flock eats me alive, I've forgotten something. What have I forgotten? Where the fuck am I? What the fuck was it? Oh. Mass! Oh, shit, I have to say mass. I gotta say mass. You have to help me. Ow! Oh, you're the priest. I can't do it in this state. Maybe the liturgy. But I have to give a sermon as well. Oh, this is a disaster. They're gonna excommunicate me. I'd like to help you, but you can. You can do the sermon for me. What? So, first, I investigate a murder no one wants investigated. Then I drunkenly keep the whole town up all night. And now you want me to preach at them from the pulpit? Do you want them to burn us at the stake? No. No, I've got it. Suppose it's Sir Ratzig's protege. You just came from studying in Prague. And you want to share the words of Master Jan Hus, who you recently heard preaching there. Henry, look. From what I remember, we might have overdone it a bit last night. And if the bailiff or someone else complains about me, the bishops can have my guts for garters. So I'd appreciate it. Stop gaping at me like a stuffed squirrel and start helping. You're mad. You're start raving mad. I'm not. It's a perfect plan. It's flawless. <coughs> oh. How about this? If you help me with this, I'll tell you who Lubosch's cronies are. Well, all right. Well, I can't make any promises about what will happen. No, neither can I. What do you want me to do, exactly? I'll go and start the liturgy. Then I'll introduce you. You give the sermon I told you yesterday in the tavern, and that's that. No need to drag it out. If it turns out well, I'll tell you what I know about Lubos. Christ almighty. Fine, then. We have a deal. Wonderful. Let's get to it, then. walk after his capers last night. You were with them, you beast. Mm. Just you wait. Look at him. Mother of God. Any minute now, he'll throw up. Yeah, guess I couldn't sleep a wink last night with all that clamor. In nomine Patris, et Fili, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Accepit panem in sanctas at venerabiles a manus suas. <clears throat> Hoc facite in meam commemorationem.
Brothers and sisters, you may have had the honor of meeting Henry from Scalitz, who is here at the behest of Sir Hanush to investigate that heinous crime at Neuha. You might not know that Henry recently visited Prague, where, by the grace of God, was able to hear Master Jan Hus from the esteemed Charles University preaching. I've managed to persuade Henry to stand here today in my stead and tell us what he heard. Because, as you all probably know, Jan Hus is a very popular preacher in Prague. So Henry, you may begin. Brothers and sisters, let me get straight to the point. I'd like to talk about the church and how corrupt it is. Boy, as a cheek. Creation has given to every man the power by which he might rule the whole world. But that power does not give him the right to rule. That right belongs to God alone. <coughs> it is the corruption of God's pastors here on earth that has brought misfortune on our heads. Plague, enemies, injustice, hunger and chaos, failed harvests, fires, floods and other catastrophes. And it is all due to um, <clears throat> the corrupt servants of God who do not practice what they preach. They think sins can be washed away by money and they sell indulgences and, and that, that's bad because sins cannot be redeemed with silver. Prague didn't do much for his confidence. And what sins? They live with harlots and keep concubines, even though only marital intercourse for the purpose of procreation is pure. If someone takes a woman or man only to satisfy their own lust, who seduces them to do so but Satan? And how much darker the sin if that man is a servant of the church? Who can turn his face